Hi, this is Dr. Brian Walsh, member of the research and development team with ProGrade. And if you have heard anything about health, chances are you've heard about the health benefits of EPA and DHA, also known as omega-3 fatty acids. Now, you've probably heard that uh, omega-3 fatty acids are good from everything to helping brain function, cardiovascular function, hormonal function, specific conditions like infertility, as well as autoimmune conditions and blood sugar balance and possibly even helping with weight loss. How can one thing, a simple omega-3 fatty acid, help all those systems in our body, help be anti-inflammatory for our whole body? And it really comes down to this one simple model. Now, what I'm about to say may seem bold, it may seem controversial, it may seem overly uh, simplistic, but there's a lot of truth to this. The difference between health and disease is really how many cells are functioning well in your body versus how many cells are not functioning well. Now, we're made up of hundreds of trillions of cells. If one cell becomes dysfunctional, you'd never even know. But at some point, enough cells start to become dysfunctional that symptoms start to develop. And wherever these cells are found uh, in large amounts, then that will be the symptom that we'll experience. So for example, if enough cells become dysfunctional in our brain, we might get something like depression. If enough cells become dysfunction, dysfunctional in our hormonal glands, we might have something like infertility or PMS or menopause or something like that. Then if the progression furthers itself and you get even more dysfunctional cells, then it may be actually classified as a disease. Again, if you have a number of cells around your heart and your vessels, it might be classified as cardiovascular disease. But really at the very basic level, very true level, is that really what you're looking at are cells that are not dysfunctional. So it's not really about trying to take a supplement that fixes a system or a certain condition. It's really about trying to get our, our cells as healthy and as properly functioning as possible. That's the difference between health and disease. Omega-3 fatty acids work on this model in our entire body, every system, every cell of our body, and that's how the research is so clear that EPA and DHA can seemingly help fix or cure just about anything that comes out in terms of symptoms or disease today. So here's what it boils down to. If optimal health means healthy functioning cells, there's really two things we need to consider. One is the machinery on the inside of the cell, the parts, and two is the membrane that's surrounding all the cells of our body. On the inside, we have things like our nucleus. Our nucleus just makes stuff, proteins, enzymes, hormones, antibodies, neurotransmitters. If something's being manufactured in our body, our nucleus is at its very root. We also have inside as a machinery is our mitochondria. Our mitochondria make ATP, which is our energy source. That's a source of energy for a nerve to fire or a muscle to contract. Uh, basically, for this cell to do what it does, it needs its energy supply, and that comes from the mitochondria. We also have something inside called vesicles. They're basically just sacks of stuff. In this case, it might be a sack of neurotransmitters that this cell wants to release to the rest of the body. So we need the parts to be healthy on the inside as well as the membrane on the outside. Now here's the big point. The membrane surrounding these machinery parts as well as our whole cells is called the phospholipid bilayer membrane. Phospholipid, meaning that surrounding our cells Surrounding these parts of our machinery is fat, mostly. Now, in these membranes, you also find proteins, but mostly it's made up of fat. And here's how EPA and DHA can be so beneficial in not combating disease or symptoms, but simply making the cells of our body function better. The structure of some fats found in the body is of a more straight and rigid nature. Now, if these fats enter into our cell membrane, the whole membrane can become rigid. And if this membrane becomes rigid, this cell, even though the parts on the inside may be working beautifully, can't send out information and can't receive information very effectively. Now, if all we were was just made up of one cell, that might be okay. But we're made up of hundreds of trillions of cells that to be healthy, have to communicate to each other. So to get this cell, the parts, to, the machinery to make stuff is great, but if it can't communicate that with the rest of the body or receive communication via receptors or channels from other parts of the body, we cannot be healthy. So if our cell membrane is filled with unhealthy fats, it becomes rigid and it can no longer communicate with the rest of the body.
But also remember that the nucleus, the mitochondria, and some other things inside of our body are also surrounded by fat. So if we have unhealthy fats, rigid fats surrounding these membranes, the nucleus can't make what it makes, the mitochondria can't make ATP well, and if we want to release a hormone or a neurotransmitter to the rest of the body, we can't do it because the, the sac surrounding it is too rigid. EPA and DHA have a slightly different structure to them. And if we get this structure within our cell membrane, it improves something called membrane fluidity. It makes the membranes uh, more like bumper boats that can float around and, and don't have, they aren't as rigid uh, and compact next to each other. So if we have a more fluid membrane surrounding the organelles or, or parts inside of our cell, we can more efficiently make energy. We can more efficiently make all the proteins and hormones and enzymes and antibodies that we want to make. We can more efficiently fuse these vesicles with the rest of the membrane and release the contents to the next cell, which can then more uh, better and efficiently receive the contents received from, or put out from that other cell. Also, if the cell membrane is healthier and more fluid, again, we can communicate with other cells and receive communication with, from other cells even better. Now, EPA and DHA are found in fish oil. They're found also in krill oil and some other places as well. I personally think krill oil is a uh, better choice than fish oil because this is a phospholipid bilayer membrane. The fatty acids found in fish oil are usually in a triglyceride or what's called a triacylglycerol form. It has to be converted into a phospholipid to be incorporated in our cell membranes. Krill oil, the EPA and DHA found in it, is already in the phospholipid form. This phospholipid form is much more easily incorporated into the cell membrane and around the machinery or the parts inside of our cells. In fact, it's been found that the phospholipid form of DHA is actually better, more efficiently taken up by our brain than the triglyceride form of DHA. So krill oil makes a pretty obvious better choice, at least in my mind, because the fatty acid content, the EPA DHA, is found in a phospholipid form, and all the cell membranes of our body are made of a phospholipid membrane. So it's already in that form. Now the second part, though, and we've talked about this in other videos, is astaxanthin. Astaxanthin when we're talking about this cell membrane healthy cell function uh, model, astaxanthin as an antioxidant can embed itself into the cell membrane. Other antioxidants like vitamin C are water soluble and it has to hang around on the outside of the cell membrane. Other antioxidants may make its way to the inside, but astaxanthin embeds itself into the cell membrane. So not only if we're taking krill oil, do we have improved uh, membrane fluidity, better communication, better function of the machinery, the parts on the inside, but now we offer protection of these as well. All disease, all symptoms has to do with dysfunctional cells. One of the causes of dysfunctional cells is reactive oxygen species, otherwise known as free radicals or oxidative stress. Oxidative stress can damage our cells, can damage the parts inside the cells. So we need antioxidant protection to block reactive oxygen species from causing this cell to be dysfunctional. And remember, health and disease, the difference is how many cells are functioning well versus how many are not. So now that we have improved membrane fluidity, if you take krill oil and you have astaxanthin, now we have an additional layer of protection inside the cell membrane from reactive oxygen species from the outside as well as reactive oxygen species from the inside, ultimately making for healthier, more better functioning cells of our body leading to more optimal health. Not by treating a condition, not by taking a specific supplement for a specific symptom, but by making the cells of our body healthier. If this cell is healthier, it can release neurotransmitters better. It can help regulate blood sugar better. It can help decrease inflammation better. So I hope you found this video health, helpful. Basically, <clears throat> health is about healthy cells. And there are some very well-researched products out there like krill oil that, can, that don't treat a condition or a symptom, but rather make the cells of our body healthier, making us healthier and hopefully happier people. I hope you found this video helpful, and I will see you on the next video.